Welcome to the den. My name is Troy and we're going to do a barnwood beam fireplace mantle build today. If you want to know how we got the beam to this point, uh, we'll leave a link at the end of the video that you can click on to see how we prepared this beam. All right, let's get started. So the barnwood beam mantle. It all starts out with this barnwood beam. This is a cedar beam, four by four post. Uh, in places, it's probably three and three quarters by four. But we we want to make our cuts because we want to make a nice 45 on this thing. That piece in the middle actually came from the end. Uh, we just put it there because it kind of looks cool. Just like the rest of this beam. And we make our end cuts so we have exact lengths of what we need to make the outskirting of our barnwood beam mantle. If you haven't done so already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We've got lots of videos like this coming out. Let's get started. Close look here, just at the corner. This is like the most intense part of the whole project. Uh, the bottom, definitely, I'm a little nervous about, but I think we can make it work. This top also needs a little adjustment, but you'll see how we go about it later on in the video. And it really does actually come together nicely. This is the focal point of the beam. So we want to make sure that we're exact in everything we do. Half an inch is what we're doing. Uh, when I say what we're doing is we're actually going to inset the top, recess it down into the four by four and make it as straight and square as possible. Keeping in mind that we only have one shot to do this because you can't just run down to the lumber store and grab this kind of wood. This stuff's actually made by mother nature over a hundred years of exposure. So yeah, this is a, a good project. It's a little intense, but uh, we're definitely ready for the challenge. So we've got our pencil mark made on both the short and long pieces, just testing it again, making sure everything lines up. We're going to be doing that over and over this video. The top, well, we went ahead and made the top. Uh, this has its original groove in it. We're going to expand that groove because we want to go that half inch. But this is the top. I just went ahead and made the top without adding it into the video. There'll be other videos down the road on how to make a flat, rustic, modern looking top. So yeah, we'll take off our supports and get everything oh my god yeah don't worry that part was kind of planned we're going to be cutting that off anyways that's on the ends so yeah you come out with this pretty nice looking top nice and flat got a little saw marks on it you know needs a enough of that okay let's let's put this thing together <laughs> so yeah so it's gonna look something like this you know or more like that except we're gonna have to trim up the edges and you know set this thing down into the grooves so looks good to me we got some nail holes we decided to line everything up uh, we will be putting a base in this thing it's actually not going to be floating which most of our mantles are this one's gonna actually sit on top of a, a flat surface so we'll get some shims and that never happens. Anyways, so checking the, the table's flat, that's like something that's overlooked by a lot of people, but just make sure that work surface is level because you're checking if that is level. Like this beam is so kind of rugged and rustic and worn away with those nail holes that we want to make sure that we get the flattest surface possible to run our router down because we're going to be putting a half inch groove into this beam where we are going to recess that top into. So we're, we're setting up a template right now, checking everything's level like over and over and over and on every spot. Once we're happy with it, we'll go ahead and tack it. And every time we tack it, that level is going to be there and we'll make little adjustments while we tack it. So, and then yeah, I'll just pound some through the top too. These nails come out super easy after it's all done. So don't be afraid to put some in. And like I said, we're going to check that level because this, we only get one shot. Uh, I said that before and I might say it again. Like, yeah, the, this is 
you have to get it right the first time because the second time is fixing to get back to the first time. So let's not even go through that. Just, just take your time. I mean, that's what we were doing here. We're double checking our measurements. We're making pencil marks. We're jotting notes down. We're double checking. We're checking our equipment that we use to make sure everything's square before we actually make our cuts because this is extremely important and you'll see why in a minute. This is what we cut. Uh, we didn't show the cutting of it, but we wanted a thin piece so we can nail it on. That's just gonna make up the difference of what we need for our router to hit that line perfectly, right? So our router measures out two and seven eighths to the tip of the blade itself, which, or the blade, what we use is a spiral bit. So, and uh, yeah, it looks like a perfect fit. So that's what the spiral bit looks like. Uh, you can get your upwards and your downwards. That just depends on which way you want your sawdust going. Uh, I actually don't even know what I have. Uh, it's a bit. <laughs> but this first time I was going to take that template and run it through the table saw to get it perfect. But you know, once I got the level on and put a couple brad nails in, I just decided to go this way. So I'm just going slow and I'm not taking any of that beam yet. I am just taking a hair, just making sure everything is squared off with our template. Uh, Cause that, you know, just get that major stuff out of the way. And really it's just hitting little pieces. So we did this as a first step and, and just to get everything lined up and square before we actually start. Now we're gonna start into the real meat, right? We're just gonna take just a hair off, just so we can, start making ourselves a trench because as you can see like this thing isn't perfectly flat so we're just starting it <laughs> that man right there is it's like intense times right now i just I, I got my hands on that router i'm probably even breathing heavy i don't know i was i was definitely in tune but that's because you only get one shot so what I was pointing at there was the side of the router. It'll just pull it out from our template a little bit. And you can see how we're like busting off that, that little piece that we never got from the beam. Uh, it's okay. I'm not worried about tear out so it can blast out the sides. It actually didn't, it cut nice and nice and smooth, but really we could have just, um, went as fast as we wanted and the, the tear out. I mean, you're never going to see that's the inside of this whole shelf unit. So there's multiple passes. You can see I took off what that was that eighth of an inch maybe. And we just kept doing that over and over and over. That was the final cleanup pass. So test fit, see if it works. We're always doing this because uh, yeah, we want this thing to be perfect. It's not for us, it's for somebody else. So, you know, they've got to have it in their house and uh, yeah, it's gonna look great if, if we get it right. So now we'll just run this through the router, the top, so we can router out that groove so it'll recess into that beam perfectly. Of course, a frame, it's just a quick two by six rip down and we made our pencil marks. We're just gonna screw and glue this. Yeah, so screw and glue, just a countersink bit and some deck screws at the back. You'll never see this. This is gonna be completely hidden. Uh, this part here is so we can get some screws into the beam so we're not blasting them through the front, right? You don't want to see a screw sticking out of it. So yeah, so we uh, glue everything up. It just, it's that extra protection from splitting apart. Yeah, test fit again. Quite happy with it. We went ahead and glued that on and Brad nailed it and yeah, bang, some clamps. And time to sand. Uh, with this combination, including some like hand sandpaper, uh, yeah, we were able to do exactly what we wanted. That wheel that goes on the drill, uh, I would have preferred if that thing was like half the diameter, but it still worked pretty well. Um, we just want to take care of these like wicked grooves, right, and turn them into this. We went ahead and did this one quickly just to show you uh, the contour sanding that we do in cases like this because what else are you going to do you know you you got to try and make it blend and everything's so rickety rackety i mean it it's really forgiving so it's nice to work with 
But we're gonna focus on this corner because this has been the important part for us and we wanna get this right. So you kind of walk you through and you can see it literally transform with the drill. Now you saw me move that. I don't have that thing clamped down because I don't wanna to push too hard. So if it moved, it's because I was pushing too hard. So I just back off on the drill. But that hand sanding, you can really see that corner come in play. It's, it's almost looking like one board. I knew that bottom was going to be tricky and I knew that there was something that uh, wasn't quite right. So we're going to deal with it now. Uh, some sandpaper. That's actually sandpaper and or sandpaper. That's actually sawdust and glue. That wood filler is what we used on the bottom. Just we didn't have to. It was just something that we wanted to do to show the customer that, you know, the bottom looks just as good as the top. So yeah, there it is, pretty much finished. Uh, man, I love it. It fits compared to the way it did in the start of the video. Yeah. So this is kind of your final outcome here. This is this is the mantle. There's one step left, and and you know that's going to be to to spray on some sealant uh, to brush this stuff on. Yeah, you're gonna get white marks. It's gonna be yeah the spraying it on is the best way to go like if you don't have a sprayer you can there's spray cans where you buy them for ten dollars or so a can and you could go ahead and do it that way it'll be more money but it'll be less than buying you know a sprayer so yeah here's our finished result that's five coats on there and this last coat you can see is drying it's a little colored but yeah beautiful beautiful